listen, today I said to myself, I could go for some olives, which is something I've never said before until I realized that the new olive Pokemon might actually be the goat. So I constructed the most powerful team man has ever seen, and we're going to give it a try. Welcome back to another Scarlet and Violet Wi-Fi battle. If you're new here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Less than half the people who do watch these videos are subscribed, and you can really help me out. Anyway, let's go ahead and jump into the match. So from looking at the teams, I'm actually feeling like our Believer has a pretty good position to be a lead here and just kind of be a menace early. So we do lead with the olives, call that a nice little appetizer. And this thing has the benefit of being uh, a nice little stab hyper voice. With the choice specs, this is actually a set that is uh, max HP and max special attack. So it's bulky enough to take attacks and it can actually do way more damage than you expect this thing to do. So Raichu does not enjoy olives, so he decides to go for the Volt Switch here. And now whatever comes in has to deal with a nice little Specs Hyper Voice. So it turns out he's going to go into the Kamala, uh, the Pokemon that I literally forgot existed. But this little sleepy fella comes in with his barrel of beer. I don't know what the hell this thing's got. But uh, I just go ahead and yell at him, and that doesn't do a whole lot of damage, which tells me that this thing is basically just a special defense wall. Um, because ordinarily Kamala is definitely going to be a two-shot from that. But that's looking like this thing is defensively bulky on the special side. Uh, and that is fine. I'm going to save the olive oil for later. It's, this thing is going to be a super nice asset to this match. As once this Kamala is kind of taken care of, there's not a whole lot of switches in uh, to the olive tree. So I decide to go into the walnut. He's a wall. He's a nut. And he's pretty much always ready to party. So this thing goes for the U-turn. Nice little pivot play there, expecting the switch. Uh, let me just say, if, if Pokemon Scarlet and Violet got anything right, it's definitely the, the gold shiny on the fortress. This thing looks amazing in this game. And I just had to give a little shout out to the texture. So uh, they decide to go into the Donphan. This is an interesting matchup because we're dudes that kind of do the same thing. We set up rocks and we spin and we're defensive. And unfortunately, he has a little bit of the upper hand there as I'm not able to do too much to it. But what I can do is pivot right back into the olive expecting him to go for the Stealth Rock. Uh, this is actually going to put me in a spot where either he has to switch into the Kamala to take another attack, um, or essentially something else has to take a really hard Choice Specs attack. So, our Believe is already putting some pretty solid pressure here, even making the damn grass grow in the middle of the battlefield, which is actually nice. Anything touching the ground gets a nice little free, kind of built-in leftover. So, we're, nice, we're, we're pretty charitable here. Uh, I decide to go for the Energy Ball here. I figure there's the boost from the little grassy terrain, and Kamala, it can come in looking cute as hell, but Olive Tree don't care. All we care about is damage. So we go for that nice little boosted energy ball here, and that almost is able to knock out the Kamala. So I've gotten some solid chip on this thing to where it's no longer kind of a problem to my team anymore, and I figure he's probably going to go for the U-turn. Uh, so rather than switching out and allowing them the momentum, I actually just stay in here, take that U-turn pretty damn nicely. And now whatever comes in has to deal with these balls. So he ends up going into the Star Raptor, and as to my surprise, I'm actually able to throw an energy ball at this thing's face. And this Star Raptor is pretty much the number one predator to my olive tree. However, I'm able to actually knock it out with a critical hit. The Choice Specs energy ball is too damn much. And that is a really unfortunate crit if you're the opponent. Specs energy ball actually does around 80% in the grassy terrain to a Star Raptor. So all that thing would have needed to do um, is basically just come in on Stealth Rocks and that Star Raptor is taken care of. But olive tree says that's fine. I, I got it handled here, my guy. Uh, so, in comes the Ice Skew. Now, this little blockhead motherfucker is kind of an issue in that it's definitely faster than me, and I do want to conserve the Arbeliva. This thing is looking too damn good, and I decide to switch into Walnut. I'm thinking I can come in here pretty easily, and if this thing even decides to belly drum, it's not going to be a one-hit KO, especially with my Sturdy. So, all I need to really do is break this thing's blockhead, be able to outspeed it with something else, and then you were fine. So, uh, he actually ends up going for the Ice Spinner against... Uh, the Arbeliva, the thing's too big of a threat. Walnut comes in and says, that shit was delicious. I eat ice spinners for breakfast. And now I decide to, I have a couple options. I can either set up the Stealth Rock, or I can just try to break this thing's ability. So I end up going for the Rapid Spin here, as he ends up actually switching back into his Donphan. So he really wants the, the spinny dudes up against each other here. But I am at least able to get rid of the Stealth Rock on my side of the field. And I don't really have any business staying in here. Although, I don't really feel comfortable switching back into Arbeliva here in case he decides to go for something uh, predicting that. I don't want the knockoff. An Ice Shard would be not ideal. So what I decide to do here is, looking at my team, sometimes you have to make the call on who's kind of like going to provide the least amount of value with the remaining matchup. So what I decide is, the Bomb Bird on my team doesn't do too much. But what I can do is I can switch in pretty easily here. Um, guarantee take an attack, but then also just get some chip damage off on this Donphan. I really want to break that sturdy, and overall, this thing's just kind of annoying and super defensive. So, Bomb Bird is going to come in on a knockoff here, which is kind of unfortunate. Gets rid of the Mirror Herb. This thing is basically just carrying that herb to try to switch in on Rapid Spins. 
Of course, I didn't have Stealth Rock up on their side of the field, so the Rapid Spin wasn't really expected there, but it's fine. I basically just need to get this thing in, go for a knockoff, get rid of its leftovers, and then try to do as much damage as possible to put this thing into chip range uh, to where, you know, one of my sweepers or even the Arbeliva can take it out later. So, he's going to go ahead and set back up the Stealth Rock as Walnut worked real hard to Rapid Spin those away, but now they're just right back up. So, Rock's all over the damn place. It's honestly fine. It's not really too affecting of my team. Uh, but now, I just basically need to, yeah, get as much chip as I can if I'm willing to trade uh, the Bombard for this matchup. That is totally fine. Like I said, it kind of just gets outclassed by the rest of his team anyway. Uh, so here he goes for the Rapid Spin. Um, actually just going to get a speed boost. I don't have my Mirror Herb, and that's not really going to help me out. But I also didn't have any Stealth Rock on their side of the field. So it kind of just shows me he doesn't have much to hit me with uh, other than Knock Off there. So that actually puts Bombard in a pretty decent spot against uh, the Donphan, to where now I can just go for a nice little Brave Bird. And he decides to save that thing for later and just goes right into Kamala. This thing's not going to provide really any value here. It's in red HP and is not very fast. So the Brave Bird is going to take care of it. And hey, we love to see Payload dropping loads on bitches and able to actually do something for once. So the sack there is going to allow him to switch into whatever he wants against Payload, which is likely going to be the Raichu. Uh, kind of just my arch nemesis out here as Raichu does come in. So... It turns out worst case scenario here is that this thing would be able to set up like a nasty plot and that is what we do not want. So I'm just going to stay in here and basically just sack off uh, the Bombard. It does go for the Thunderbolt there and may the payload rest in peace. He shall be dropping loads on fools in the afterlife. So uh, now that opens the door for basically the Olive to come right back in and just be a menace like this thing is used to. Um, there's not a whole lot that can switch into this at this point and we know that the Raichu does not have any coverage to knock me out at this point. So I'm just going to go right for... A nice little hyper voice and if he decides to switch something's got to take it so he does end up going for the volt switch here uh, that is going to in fact set up my seed sower once again so i get that little little built-in leftovers and now it comes down to what wants to take an olive attack we've got some pretty good chip on the remainder of the team so there's not much that wants to come in on this he's going to need some speed priority to do much so ends up going into the don fan here and that is basically just going to be a sack i just go ahead and yell at him and don fan does not like the pressure and decides to uh, just die. So <laughs> down goes Don Fan, and honestly, I'm surprised by Arbeliva's ability to just do damage and just stay alive, especially uh, some pretty decent matchups in this tier. So uh, now he gets a free switch, and back comes the Ice Cube. I swear to God, this Ice Cube Penguin is going to be the damn death of me, because this thing just outspeeds and kills me with an Ice Spinner, so I basically just decide to go back into the Fortress here. And even, again, if this thing decides to Belly Drum, I have the benefit of Leftovers, and the grassy terrain to put me back in sturdy range. So my basic idea here is allow Fortress to stay alive and just knock this thing's head off to where then I can just outspeed and then knock it out with something later. Uh, to my surprise, he actually ends up going for the belly drum here. So he expects the switch was actually a really good play. Uh, had I known he was going to belly drum, I could have just stayed in and gone for another hyper voice to knock it out. Uh, ICU's ability only works against physical attacks, so yeah, it would just go through the, the ice head. So... Uh, now this thing's in a position that's got maxed out attack, but unfortunately for him, I got a well-played Fortress who is basically built to handle this shit. Uh, ends up going for the Liquidation here, and even at plus 6, knocks me down to 69 giggity, and then I can go for a Rapid Spin. Basically spin my dude's freaking dome off, and uh, that's amazing, because now we just get to see his puny-ass little, little oval-ass head. And <laughs> now it's in range to be able to just outspeed with either First Impression or Choice Scarf Gallade in the back, so... Fortress does exactly what it's meant to do. I kind of kept this thing in the back basically for this penguin because I'll be damned if I'm swept by a goofy ass looking penguin like this. So one more attack should be pretty close to knocking Fortress out, but you never know about minimum damage rolls and things like that. So I decided to just go for the gyro ball here. I do actually have the Terra Fire on the Fortress, which doesn't help me in this situation. But as it turns out, he's actually going to use his Terra, go full on ice, and with that extra stab on an ice spinner, it should be able to take care of Fortress. But I did exactly what I needed to do. I was able to break this thing's head off, and that's that's kind of all I could ask for. So the Ice Spinner is going to be enough to take care of the Fortress. And now I have a few different answers for this Pokemon. Like I said, I have the Gallade, but I also have the Low Kicks. And Low Kicks is actually positioned a little bit better, because one of his remaining Pokemon is going to be the Slowbro. Uh, going into Gallade, I can easily just outspeed with the Scarf and then just kill it with a Fighting Move, but then Slowbro switches in really easily. Uh, so instead, I decide to go into the low kicks here. A first impression with that life orb and stab should be able to knock this thing out no problem. And then if he decides to go into Slowbro, that does a bunch of damage. And he probably just hopes that I'm choice banned at that point. So 
Uh, I bring this thing in, go for that priority first impression here, and he does decide to switch into uh, our boy Paul. Love to see him out here. I gotta get me one of these things built. But, of course, we're gonna be able to do a whole dick load of damage with life or boosted first impression here, and luckily I'm not choice banned, so I'm actually able to just switch moves here and then finish this thing off. And I'll tell you what, low kicks? It's got to be one of the most scary Pokemon to play against in the late game. You can really just do so much with this thing. And it's a very, very scary fella. Honestly, one of the cooler bug types. But uh, Leech Life is going to knock out the Slowbro. And now they are down to two Pokemon. So they have that Raichu, which is actually pretty dang scary. And they also have the, the damn Penguin that I've been dealing with all day. So he's actually going to end up switching into the ICU on the open battlefield here. And I'm thinking that should be fine. I have the priority with the stab on the Sucker Punch. And it should be close to knocking this thing out, if not going for the kill. So... I actually, in fact, misclick and go for the Axe Kick, which is wildly unfortunate because of this thing's ability, once its Ice Head is broken off, it actually gets like base 130 speed, I'm pretty sure. So it's able to outspeed my damn Grasshopper, and that is unfortunate. However, I do still have an answer. I have both Scarf Gallade, and I do also have the freaking Bagel on his ears ass Dots Bun here. So I'm able to bring in the Purebred, and I'm actually going to use my Terra here. I go Terra Steel just so that I can uh, resist the potential ice spinner this is actually a 252 uh, HP and 252 defense build on this thing so it's basically here to be extremely defensive uh, so I figure I'm probably fine regardless on being able to take an attack but I just want to go ahead and make sure put a freaking axe on my head just to look cool as hell if there's a way to make a dog made out of bread look cool it's kind of the only way to do it so he goes for the ice spinner here I am defensive his tits and I'm able to take that super nicely and then a body press is gonna be able to take care of the ice cube so that is amazing the final Pokemon is going to be that Raichu over there. I've basically been saving my Gallade with that Scarf to be able to outspeed it um, to ensure that uh, I don't get swept by the Raichu. At least, I'm hoping so. Now, this Dot Spun's a little bit more of a support build. Of course, I got Wish Protect on this thing, so I'm actually not able to get super good damage, but what it can do is try to live. Unfortunately, against special attackers, it doesn't really have the, the greatest option there. So, in comes the Raichu. This thing is still at full health. And what I can do is I can guarantee that I can at least take one attack from this thing and I can go for a nice little stab play rough, put it in range to where I know that Gallade should be able to take care of it. So plan is I go for the play rough here. He actually does end up going for the nasty plot, which is extremely scary. Now this thing's special attack has enough to pretty much knock out anything on my team. Uh, the play rough does do over half, but it's not looking that great for our little puppy friend to take a, a thunderbolt after the plus two from this thing. So all I can really do here is sack off the dog Play timer is coming down to three minutes. This match is actually getting right down to it. Goes for the Thunderbolt. I actually live it with six HP, which is insane. And a play rough is able to take care of it. So I should not have doubted this fella. Able to live with six is insane. I did have the Gallade for security in the back. But that is going to be the end of the match. And that was a super good one. I had a lot of fun with this team. Let me know what you guys thought. I'd, I'd really like reading all the comments. I do appreciate all the support on these videos. And I will catch you guys next time. Peace out.